Um, so the first uh, obvious question is, uh, what actually is plan verification? Well, as you have already seen, it's the question, are we there yet? Or by a quite different matter than uh, Malta introduced the question last year at ECHI. Uh, it's basically the question, given a plan and a planning problem, is this plan a solution to the planning problem or not? Um, for classical planning, that's fairly easy uh, because we only have to check whether the plan is executable in the initial state and whether it reaches the goal state or not. Um, this is obviously uh, linear uh, in the size of the plan. Um, if the plan is partially ordered, um, this problem becomes, uh, no, sorry, for uh, buckle planning, this problem uh, becomes quadratic. Uh, so we now have only a partially ordered set of actions and causal links, and what we have to do is to check whether the plan contains flaws. That's a well-known technique from buckle planning. Um, again, if we only, uh, if we now omit the causal links and only have a partially ordered set of actions, and the question is, is it a solution or not, this problem becomes NP-complete because we have to find an executable linearization was shown several years ago, or more like decades ago, to be NP-complete. And um, three years ago at uh, ECHI, there was a work uh, paper of Lang and uh, Zanuttini uh, discussing plan verification for plans that contain uh, control structures, so if, uh, basically ifs and uh, kind of while loops, and they showed that this is uh, PyP2 complete, so a little harder than NP. Um, however, for the case of, N, uh, of HDN planning, for hierarchical planning, uh, the question First, the question becomes a little different because we don't have a goal state anymore, but we have to check uh, whether the solution is executable and whether it has been obtained in a specific way. Um, and this problem is still, un and the, uh, the hardness of this problem is still unknown. What we did in our papers is investigate exactly this problem. Um, so the next question one could obviously pose is, why the hell should we do plan verification? Uh, what's the benefit of it? Well, the first is um, to do post-optimization. If you're doing, uh, your plan has produced uh, some plan, now you want to change it in some way. You want to maybe remove an action because you have seen that it, uh, that it is superfluous. Or uh, the user has told you, ah, maybe swip, uh, swap this action with this one. Uh, you still have to check whether this is still, a, you have to check whether this is still a solution or not. In classical plan, that's again easy. Uh, but for edge down planning, that potentially becomes more difficult. A similar problem arises uh, if you're dealing with plan repair. Um, something happens, uh, something unforeseen happens during the execution of the plan, and uh, you have to change the plan accordingly, and in HDM planning you still have to verify whether this is still a procedural solution to the planning problem. And uh, as the title of the paper suggests, it has also some implications uh, for plan recognition, uh, most notably because the HDN uh, plan libraries are uh, commonly used in plan recognition representing the possible plans a user might execute. Uh, we'll come to, the, to this at the end of the talk. So what have we done in our paper? Well, we've first shown that plan verification in uh, two variants we discussed as NP-complete. Um, we've uh, also discussed the problem of uh, plan compatibility, which I won't go here into detail. Uh, it basically asks whether two plans, were given two plans, whether one is a specialization of the other one. Um, in an ordinary partially ordered semantics, so there is no HDN involved here. Uh, and the third one is uh, obviously to discuss implications for plan recognition. Uh, so just let me give you again a short introduction uh, to HDN planning. Um, an HDN planning domain can be formally defined as such, such a six tuple, consisting first of a set of primitive and uh, compound actions. I think Ron called uh, the compound actions abstract ones, but there is no, no difference. We assume that primitive actions can be uh, executed directly and compound actions must be refined further uh, to obtain a solution. Um, next, uh, the planning domain contains a so-called initial um, compound task, uh, and every solution must be a refinement of this initial compound task. That is actually the goal we want to achieve uh, in uh, HDN planning. So how do we do this refinements? Uh, well, we have methods uh, for each uh, compound task. Uh, for example, these four here on the side. And please note that methods can also be empty, so you have potentially have the opportunity to simply delete abstract ta or compound tasks because you are, may or may already have achieved them. Um, so now in this case, we choose, for example, choose the first one, then apply the refinement and obtain a plan containing exactly these two abstract tasks. The gray ones are not anymore in the plan, but are still there uh, because the plan was obtained this way. Uh, then again, uh, for this abstract task, we might have uh, other, uh, another method, apply it again, obtain this plan, and uh, we have reached a solution 
the second criterion if the plan only contains primitive tasks. Um, then we can obviously define um, an execution semantics, uh, in this case as a simple propositional um, based, on, based on a set of fluents. And then we can formulate the, uh, the third uh, execution uh, solution criterion, uh, which says here it must be uh, executable from the initial state. And there must only be a executable linearization, not every uh, linearization must be executable. Okay, so using this definition, we can formally define uh, the problem of HDM plan verification, which is given such a planning problem and a tasking work. As Ron already mentioned, it's a partially ordered set of actions. Um, is it in the solution set or not? Well, what do, do we have to do? Well, follow the criteria uh, on the previous slide. First, check whether uh, this uh, uh, task network is the refinement of the initial abstract task. Second, check whether it's primitive. That's rather easy. And third, check for executability. Um, here, the main reason for NP-hardness is uh, the property that it is uh, NP-hard to find an executable linearization uh, of a partially ordered set of actions. So that's rather easy to obtain NP-hardness. NP-membership is a little bit more difficult. Uh, we've adapted a proof presented by uh, Höller et al. Uh, last, at last year's ACHI that showed uh, that uh, the uh, set of solutions induced by such a planning problem uh, in fact form a context-sensitive language. The proof, however, is not applicable here because they are, the proof only sh itself only shows piece-based membership and not NP-membership and is fairly complex to meet the strict criteria for context-sensitive languages. Um, so we've adapted th this proof, and it works basically in two phases. First, simply guess a linearization and try to execute it. If that fails, it, isn't it, isn't, it can't be a solution. And then guess a decomposition and check the decomposition. Um, so how do we guess a decomposition? Well, we start with the initial abstract task and repeatedly guess a decomposition method to apply and simply apply it and repeat this process until we have found the task network we're inquiring for. Sadly, this is not sufficient, uh, else uh, HDM planning would be, uh, well, maybe it would be decidable if that would be true. No, it wouldn't be decidable. Um, we have to take uh, additional um, steps to ensure termination in this case. And the main problem uh, is shown here. Um, it is that, that um, we the intermediate uh, task networks might have a slower size, might have a, uh, a smaller size. So we don't know how large these intermediate task networks might grow, and we don't know when to stop. And we even don't know uh, how long these sequences may be, because we yeah, can have this kind of renaming uh, methods that simply replace one compound test with another one. And you don't know how many of them you have to execute to reach the solution. Well, the first thing we uh, we did was to handle these deleting decomposition methods in a clever way. Um, I won't go into detail here. Um, if you're interested in it, just ask me after the talk or read the paper. Um, the second thing is uh, we uh, have estimated the maximum no amount of uh, decomposition methods you have to apply to reach every possible task network of the size of the input. And fortunately, this is polynomial. It's simply the size of the task network you're inquiring for times the number of compound tasks plus one. And uh, yeah, still just apply uh, decomposition methods until you've applied too much or too many, uh, and then abort the, the search itself. Um, here the re main reasons for NP-hardness, uh, the main reason for NP-hardness was to find an executable linearization. Uh, suppose we already have one. Maybe we've observed the user performing uh, some actions. Uh, then we all uh, obviously know uh, that the that the uh, there is an executable linearization because we have seen one, or we have a planning uh, system that gen that guarantees us that every execute linearization is executable. Uh, for example, hybrid planning, which is a fusion of HDN and Pockel planning, uh, and there are also proposals uh, to alter the grand uh, basic definition of HDN planning so that uh, a solution is only solution if every uh, ex um, linearization is executable and checking that is easier than P. So what we propose is a diff slightly different version of the problem. Uh, here we are, don't get uh, a task network as the input but a sequence of actions and we have to check whether th this sequence of actions is an executable linearization of a task network. So we already have our witness for executability and basically factored out this problem. Uh, unfortunately, no, sorry, just 
First, go to NP membership. That's fairly easy. Just apply the previous proof, proof again. Uh, it's a straightforward adaptation for proof. Now, unfortunately, this problem is still NP hard. Um, I only present proof idea because the proof is fairly technical. Um, uh, the main idea is to uh, use a reduction from the well known vertex cover problem. Uh, for all of you who don't know the problem anymore, um, the problem is given a graph uh, with vertices and actions, uh, edges, and uh, number k. Uh, decide whether there is a subset of the vertices uh, called the vertex cover such that every uh, edge in the graph is adjacent to one uh, vertex in the vertex cover. This problem is clearly NP complete. Um, and the basic idea is for, uh, to have abstract tasks for every edge and let the, com let the decomposition choose uh, which of the uh, vertices adjacent to the edge is a member of the cover. And then we uh, use the, uh, the input word to ensure that at most k of these uh, actions are chosen. Um, as I don't present the proof here, um, I'll just uh, tell you something about the domain we're constructing here. Um, it's a fairly easy domain, so you don't need that many features of HDN planning. Most notably, this domain does not have any preconditions nor effects. Um, there's no ordering constraints in the methods. Uh, there are no cycles in the decomposition hierarchy, so as Ron uh, named the class as acyclic. Uh, and the depth is at most two. So you start with the initial abstract task, decompose it once into abstract tasks, and then if you decompose it again, you reach guaranteed primitive tasks. And if we replace the definition in the definition, the abstract initial abstract task with an initial abstract task network, uh, you have only depth one, uh, which basically means that every method uh, maps only to primitive tasks. So there are no abstract tasks produced by any method in this case. Uh, meaning that uh, yeah. um, that, N, uh, that plan verification is uh, NP-complete NP even for these restricted planning domains. And it's fairly easy to, well, it's apparently necess usually necessary to have at least uh, the features that we allow in the proof. So now I come to the uh, implications for planner recognition. First of all, what is planner recognition in our framework? Um, it's given a uh, sequence of actions, uh, decide which goal the user pursues. So we're here abstracting completely from probabilities. We're just interested in the yes, no question. Does the user possibly pursue this goal or not? Uh, this can be easily reduced uh, to the easier question, uh, given a planning problem. Uh, can the, observ can the uh, observed actions still lead to the solution simply by splitting, uh, producing one planning problem for each possible goal and inquiring for each of them. Um, and as I said earlier, um, HM planner libraries are fairly commonly used uh, to represent uh, the plans a user might execute. Um, so the question of plan, ref uh, plan recognition given an HTM planning problem is relevant. Um, more formally, it resembles uh, the definition uh, of this uh, verify sequence problem quite a lot, uh, with the only distinction being uh, these three words here, a prefix of. Uh, so what we have is we're given a sequence of actions, so-called observations. Then we ask whether there is a task network in the set of solutions, for which the observations are a prefix and uh, the linearization is itself executable. And then we have to check uh, whether it's a valid decomposition or not. Well, plan recognition in general is semi decidable, uh, strictly semi decidable. Um, the undecidability part we obtain uh, using omega as the empty word. So we're basically asking is there any solution to the plan problem at all? And we know that this is undecidable. So this problem still is also undecidable. And semi decidability we uh, obtain from the fact that this is a set of solutions is enumerable. So just enumerate them all and test them, basically, using the, pr uh, the techniques we've shown earlier. Um, the question is, can this get any easier? So are there some relaxations of the problem that uh, make it maybe polynomial, maybe NP, maybe P space? Uh, we've looked into one very easy one, uh, namely the fact, uh, the statement that you know that every action that you uh, no, sorry. Uh, that the plan you observe is already completed. So you know that the user has executed all actions necessary to obtain the goal. And simply the question, what was the goal? And uh, this boils 
uh, down to the vector sequence problem, uh, which we have shown to be NP-complete. So even for this fairly easy case, it's uh, still NP-complete. And planning recognition for HDM plan, uh, for HDM planning pro uh, problems remains a hard problem. So what have we done in our paper? Uh, well, we have shown that uh, HDM plan verification is NP-complete, both for sequences and task networks. Uh, we've shown that it's still NP-complete for severely restricted HDN planning domains. So there's basically no hope that this can get any any easier. Um, we've shown that HDN plan recognition is strictly semi-decidable and uh, even NP-complete, still NP-complete, uh, if we know that all actions have been observed. And as I mentioned, the paper contains also proof about plan compatibility, which is in NP, uh, which is NP-complete. Thank you very much. Are there any questions?